here this afternoon. Both these teams coming in at two and two. And the ball will come out of bounds. First and ten for the Hurricanes. And the quarterback, Jaron Williams, getting the start. Mark Jones chopping it up with Dusty Dvorak. Key game for both these teams and key quarterback. And Jaron Williams has done a nice job. He goes against one of the defensive coordinators of all time at Virginia Tech. And it's his final season, 33rd year at Virginia Tech. And this defense hasn't played up to Bud Foster's sta standards. He told them to let it loose today and execute. And Jaron Williams won this starting job throughout spring, fall camp, over 72% completion, seven touchdowns, and yet to throw an interception. Can Bud Foster get this defense to try to take the ball away from a young, talented quarterback in Jaron Williams? One of the great storylines prevailing on the day. Williams going to work out of the shotgun. First down and 10 from the 35. He's going to hand it off to DJ Dallas as the Canes try to get that running game going. It wasn't very prolific in their win a couple of weeks ago here at home against Central Michigan. There's a look at Jaron Williams. Mentioned the fact that he's thrown for over a thousand yards yet has yet to throw an interception. Just one of three quarterbacks so far in the FBS to do that. And he showed some real toughness, Jonesy. This guy's been hit, sacked 18 times with a young offensive line, continues to get up. They set up the screen. Dallas makes the catch in a crowd and makes it out to about the 40-yard line. It'll be third down, about five to go. First-year head coach Manny Diaz, the former defensive coordinator for three years for the Hurricanes, said that they want to come out, and if nothing else, they want to compete and become a team that competes and plays hard and fast this week. Yeah, he wasn't happy with the way they competed against Central Michigan. He was happy with the competitive spirit he saw in the first three games, but into the bye week, he saw a lull, and he really tried to impress upon his team to get it going and compete every day. On third and five, Williams gets it out quickly, almost intercepted and picked off at the 48-yard line by Jermaine Waller. And that's the first interception of the season for Jaron Williams. That was his first pick of the year. Waller, meanwhile, with his second interception for Virginia Tech. One more look, Dusty. But tried to hit Harley on an inside slant. Excellent job jumping the route by the nickelback 22. Chamari Connor balls in the air, and their best cornerback, Jermaine Waller, is on an excellent start for this Hokie defense getting a takeaway early. And great field position for Virginia Tech to start the game. First and 10, Hooker at quarterback hands it off to a starting tailback, McCleese. Has four touchdown runs coming into the ball game. This is Hendon Hooker, just one of two passing in his career. He redshirted as a freshman, played sparingly as a redshirt freshman last year. And appearing in just six games for head coach Justin Fuente now in his fourth season. On second and eight. McLeese again. It's going to be a long third and about seven to go. Finley making the tackle for Miami. You know, this offense has struggled to run as well, only averaging 3.6 yards per carry. And Ryan Willis had turned the football over too much. That really opened the door for Hendon Hooker, who's going to bring a different dynamic. Excellent athlete and gives him a different dimension that they haven't had in this Hokie offense. I was looking at Willis on the sidelines. He began the first four games of the season. Still available to play today. Out of the shotgun, Hooker. This is the dimension that he adds that Willis didn't have, and he picks up the first down inside the 30-yard line all the way down to the 27. So Hendon Hooker picks up 15 yards for Virginia Tech. And this here is a design run play. Watch McLeese come up and try to ISO on the middle backer 55 Shaq Quarterman. They're going to pass protect it first, and you see 33 release out. He's going to get up on the second level. Nice play by Hendon Hooker, making a play with his legs on a key third down, making guys miss in the open field. From 
from the 27 out of the shotgun. They hand it off again. McLeese down to the 23 yard dot line. Romeo Finley making the stop after the four yard gain. Justin Fuente said he wanted his team to continue to show marked improvement. They want to be tougher. They want to play very physically here this afternoon. He liked the week of practice they had. An embarrassing effort against Duke last Friday night at home. Challenged his team throughout the week, and he felt that they had as good a week of practice as they've had all season, and here responding well early. Moving the ball after the interception. Pass complete to the edge to Travion Robinson, and he picks up a first down for Virginia Tech. That true freshman has been one of the bright spots offensively, Dusty, as he picks up seven. Dynamic, excellent in space. He's got speed, the ability to make you miss. And as you mentioned, already as a true freshman, really the standout so far for this Hokie offense. I like the game plan, not putting much on Hooker's plate, running the football, allowing him to run it, then quick passes out on the edge, not allowing that Miami pass rush to get home. On first and 10, Hooker out of the shotgun. Into the end zone, incomplete. He tried to hit Damon Hazelton, who was working against Brandy on the play. And it'll be second down and 10. But if a size mismatch, but Damon Hazelton had been out all season, tweaked a hammy. He was their leading receiver last year, had a big play against Duke, and he goes about 6'2, 215. And though Trajan Bandy outside, he's physical. He's lacking in the, in the height department, just 5'9, about 190 pounds. Second and ten, three receiver formation. Robinson in motion. They fake the jet sweep, and Hooker keeps it and falls down to the 12 yard line. Finley in on his third tackle already here today. Miami, with a staunch defense, ranked second in the ACC. And they really get after it on third down. Look for Blake Baker defensive coordinator to come after Hendon Hooker the young inexperienced quarterback on third down Hooker's going to take off one guy to beat and did it touchdown Hokies an impressive opening drive capitalizing off the interception for Justin Fuente's squad. Poor job by Miami defensively keeping proper rush lanes. When you've got a mobile quarterback, you've got to shut down the, not just the throwing lanes, but the running lanes for a quarterback. They got too far on one side of the offensive line. A big running lane opened up, and Hendon Hooker saw it, took advantage, and took it to the house. Impressive start for Virginia Tech. And for Hooker, that's his first rushing touchdown of the season. And for a guy making his first start, Dusty, he looks pretty poised to start here. Well, we knew he was going to be athletic and give this offense a different di di dimension. And man, huge touchdown for Virginia Tech. On the other side, I'll show you exactly how he was able to make it happen. See how Jaron Williams responds after throwing his first interception of the season on the last series. First down and 10 Miami from the 25. A little play action. Has a man open at the 45. Complete to Brevin Jordan. One of the top rated tight ends out of high school a couple of seasons ago. First and 10. Dan Enos loves to utilize play action pass. Going to watch Brevin Knight come on the, the deep over. Sorry for the near side. Just runs a, a simple corner route. Excellent throw. Gets behind the coverage, play action pass. Something Dan Enos loves to utilize in this offense. Enos a key hire for Manny Diaz. On the reverse, this is Jeff Thomas. Thomas picking up about eight yards. Olivia has more on our quarterback, Jaron Williams. Well, good response for him on this drive after throwing his first college interception. I asked him this week on the phone, I said, is there a little pressure, kind of that, that cloud hanging over you, knowing that you're one of the few guys in the conference to not throw a, an interception yet? And he told me a little bit, we just cannot turn it over. So not happy with that, but good demeanor on the sideline, talking to his backup, Nikozi Perry. Yeah, Williams is really looking forward to this game, Olivia. It's only earlier this week at practice He's ready to show the world that this team can be very special. 
And he takes off using his legs, sliding down to the 34-yard line. Pickup of 11 on the play. First-year offensive coordinator Dan Enos coming over from Alabama where he was quarterback's coach. Important in terms of developing talent at that position, Dusty. Did a great job with Jalen Hurts last year at Alabama. Really helped fine-tune his skill set and talk with Manny Diaz. That's one of the main reasons he brought him. Not only was it difficult to prepare for him in the SEC, but he's known for developing quality quarterbacks. They're going to run it. D.J. Dallas bouncing outside. And dragged down at about the 33 by Caleb Farley. And as as Manny Diaz told us, when Miami's got a good quarterback, yeah. they're pretty tough to beat. And they think that they've got something special and the young signal caller, Jaron Williams. Uh, he beat out the incumbent, Perry and Tate Martell, the transfer from Ohio State. And giving his reasons for Williams winning QB1. Diaz and Enos both saying that he was just a little bit more instinctive than the other two. Taking a shot deep into the end zone. Picked off again this time by Farley. He tried to hit D. Wiggins and was intercepted for the second time already. Ball was slightly underthrown, but this is outstanding coverage down the field by Caleb Farley. Big corner at six foot two, 207. Looking at Farley there, missed it on the outside. But it was excellent job by Farley getting inside position and getting a key takeaway. Rough start for Jaron Williams here at home. Yeah, Dan Eno's trying to coach him back up on the sidelines. Two interceptions in the last three passes. Rough start for Williams. Virginia Tech bringing their lunch pail today. Rated T to M. For the tight end, James Mitchell. Well, so far it's the pale outdoing the bling. Those touchdown rings look a look like they need, they need a little bit of work right now. Yes, they do. And I'll tell you what, Bud Foster, he's been looking for this from his defense. They only had three takeaways coming in today, and that's a staple, has been for so many years, of what Bud Foster does, aggressive attacking, and being able to create turnovers two already early on here in this first quarter. Come with a little bit of pressure on the quarterback, and good dump off on the screen out for a six-yard gain to Dalton Keene as we go back to Matt Berry in the studio. Okay, Jonesy, Tech. To go in the first quarter. Two Miami interceptions already. They've been one of nine teams who hadn't thrown one this season. Hendon Hooker at quarterback number two making his first start of the season. Got one-on-one -on -one coverage and incomplete. Intended for Damon Hazelton. Their leading receiver a season ago. Well, this week, our Saturday night football game presented by Wells Fargo, a top 25 Big Ten battle. Number 25, Michigan State. Number four, Ohio State from the shoe in Columbus. 7.30, Miami has two of them right now. Williams completes this pass to Mike Harley. Making a couple of slick moves. Hit him with the two-piece to pick up the first down. Good timing there with Mike Harley, but it's all about interceptions. Coming into the game, Jaron Williams didn't have one. This is just a good defensive play by the nickel. Connor to get the deflection. Second one, this is on Jaron Williams. Ball's underthrown. You see fairly working for position, able to get the interception. But coming into the game, he was flawless. And here early on, first two possessions, two interceptions. Intrigued to see how the freshman quarterback responds to a little bit of early adversity. You saw Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator, coaching up on the sidelines. Williams has said that I love being coached hard, and Coach Enos does exactly that with me. Because he wants me to become a complete quarterback. Miami calls timeout. We'll take one, too, with some 15 miles east of here. At Miami Gardens and Hard Rock Stadium. Cameron Harris dotting the eye. Williams back to pass. Under heat. Nowhere to go. And he's going to be sacked. Back at the 21-yard line. Good pursuit by the Hokies defensively. And Connor comes up with the sack. 
Bud Foster dials up pressure, and it gets home. You'll see it come from both sides. Jaron Williams is able to evade the initial defender. Looks like Diablo gets there first, but then it's the safety. Chamari Connor, who's been all over the place here early, past deflection, which led to a big interception, and now he gets a key sack, setting up second and extra long. Great start for Bud Foster's defense. He's already announced that this will be his last year at Virginia Tech. After 33 years on the sideline, one of the best to ever do it, Bud Foster. Second and 25, Williams pulls the trigger complete. Matt, will, uh, Matt, after 33 years, figure he's get, getting the gold watch, right? Back to you. Yeah, we're all wearing gold watches here in studio. As we watch Texas and West Virginia, Sam Ellinger, good toss to Malcolm F. Texas answers were tied at seven midway through the first quarter. I kind of had a feeling that game's going to be a shootout. Texas secondary's beat up, man. Sam Ellinger. Pretty good as they're getting ready for a big one in Dallas next week. Third and long for the Hurricanes. They've had a hard time here in the first quarter offensively. Williams. They pick up the pressure and he throws his third pick of the day. Virginia Tech's Waller this time has their third interception. And a chorus of boos cascading down on starting quarterback Jaron Williams. Ooh, rough start for the freshman quarterback. It starts with the pressure. It's going to come off the left side of the offensive line. As he takes a shot from 36 to Sean Crawford. Going to get home inside. Big hit on him right as he delivers the football. And then Jermaine Waller steps in front of the pass. Excellent coverage. That ball hung in the air too long. Allowed the corner to make an athletic play. And a rough, rough start for Jaron Williams here at home. And that's three picks in his last six passes in the first 12 and a half minutes. Up the middle, this is King, Keyshawn King, the second of two tailbacks for Virginia Tech. King came into the ball game averaging almost six yards per carry. Under four minutes to go. Well, this is where the strength of this football team has to step up. You've got to lean on seniors like Shaq Quarterman, Michael Pinckney, and they got to find a way to get a key stop here and keep Miami in this football game. The pressure coming. Hooker drops back. Backside pressure found his man, though. And touchdown, Hokies. Keen with another score. But there's a flag down back of the 20. Personal foul. Dropping the passer. Defense number 97. 15-yard penalty be assessed on the kickoff. Touchdown. That's going to go against John Garvin, the defensive end. The touchdown stands. And for Keene, that's his first touchdown reception of the season. I love the play design, misdirection, roll hooker to one side, sneak the tight end. Dalton Keene out the backside. Miami never saw it coming. Garvin with a late hit. And a walk-in touchdown for the talented tight end, Dalton Keene. What a start for Virginia Tech. And Miami, Jonesy, they seem a little shell-shocked right now. There is a stun three turnovers already by starting quarterback Jaron Williams. He hadn't thrown a pick all season until this afternoon. And he's already given it away three times in the first quarter. And the question begs, who comes out to take the next series? Sometimes you just dial up the right play. Justin Fuente dials up the perfect play against this defense. You're going to see pressure come off this edge. I want you to watch. They're going to rotate the quarterback here, and then they're going to sneak the tight end out the backside. He's going to block, and he's going to come across, and nobody is going to stay with him. Tight end's going to sit. He's going to hold, sneak out the backside right where the blitz came from. Nobody is home, and then he takes it into the end zone. Excellent play call by Justin Fuente and good execution by Hendon Hooker to the tight end Dalton Key. Dusty, we got Nikosi Perry in the ball game. Hands it off on his first play to Mike Harley. And Harley put it on the ground. But they're going to say that he was down. And we have a new quarterback, Olivia. What do you have to tell us? 
Well, the crowd started booing the second Nikozi Perry took the field, as we hear them saying now. Remember, he was the starter last year and struggled. Jaron Williams was kind of becoming a fan favorite, obviously, until those three picks. I will tell you, players on defense and offense coming over to Jaron Williams, saying it's okay, patting him on the helmet. But Danny knows made that call, and he made it quick. Yeah, he uh, pressed the button here. With just under three minutes to go in the first yeah, the quarter. Virginia Tech thinks they have the football. Let's take one more look at that last play. Harley, oh, the ball definitely Balls came out. 100 percent out. No question. That's going to be Virginia Tech football. Diablo was there to make the hit on the play for the Hokies. Punched out with his left hand. Balls on the sidelines. Wow. What a start for Bud Foster's defense and a nightmare scenario unfolding here for Miami. They had not turned the ball over passing all season until today and uh, the Hokies will get the ball at the spot there. And Virginia Tech came in 128 out of 130 teams in turnover margin. They were a minus eight. OK. They were averaging negative to a game and we're not out of the first quarter and they're plus four. There's a look at Harley who put it on the ground a moment ago. Smart, smart by the Virginia Tech defensive player. 41, Jalen Griffin. You see his feet are out of bounds. He re he repositions himself back in bounds, establishes himself back in bounds, and then he picks up the football to get a clear recovery for Virginia Tech. Yeah, great catch there, Dusty, on the replay. And good pictures from the truck. Wow, to think that potentially now that Manny Diaz's team has turned it over four times oh. in the first quarter. You know, the warning signs were there. During the off week on a Wednesday, they were very lackluster, lackadaisical. He blew the whistle and made everybody go hard one-on-one -on -one drills for a few segments to reset everybody. And he told them, you're going to be out here and you're going to compete or else if we have to fix it, it's going to be trouble. Yeah, he said it was on Wednesday, midweek of the bye week. There was a huge lull. This is after a game they didn't compete in. So he said, I got, he called him up. He said, I got three options. I can yell, cuss, and scream at you. I can run you, which I don't want to do, or we can just go compete. So he had to force these guys to step up, compete. He said from there, everything ratcheted up, but that just gives you a sense that this team potentially mindset. Not quite in the right place. I want to revisit, though, making the switch already to Nikosi Perry. Okay. That surprises me a little bit. You don't like it? So the first sign of adversity for the young quarterback, and all of a sudden it's that quick, you're going to pull him out? After further review, the runner was not down prior to fumble. Virginia Tech recovered. First and 10, Virginia Tech. Please set the clock for 316. Here's how we got to this point with 2.57 to go in the first quarter. 14-0 Hokies. Williams got off to a shaky start. This was the first of three interceptions. That was his first of the season. And that was the second one. Virginia Tech, meanwhile, has been very opportunistic, putting 14 points on the board after those interceptions. Diablo with the punch out right there before he hits the sidelines. Heads up play by the junior safety. Four turnovers in 14 plays, Dusty. McLeese in the backfield. Beside Hendon Hooker making his first start. Hooker had that one batted at the line of scrimmage by Pat Bethel. Good penetration and pressure up front by Bethel. Virginia Tech came into this game and they wanted to prove a point. They were fired up. They were ready to go before the game. On second down, this is McLeese. When you look at Virginia Tech's schedule so far, their two wins, Dusty, against Old Dominion and Furman, losses at Boston College, and they got drilled by Duke last week at home. So a game here against an FBS opponent, conference opponent like Miami, is huge for them to get in the win column. Third and six. Kind of feels like old school Beamer ball. Yeah. Tough defense from Bud Foster. Taking the ball away and converting when you get it. They fake the jet sweep. Hooker keeps it. Breaks a couple of tackles. All the way down to the two-yard line. 
There's a flag down as well, but Hooker put a great move on Shaq Quarterman at middle linebacker. He picked up 14 if it stands. Boy, Hooker has proven to be very elusive so far and been very impressive running the football. Acceleration. We've seen the ability to make guys miss in the open field. After the play, first for foul, defense number 21. After distance to the goal, first down. That's the second one of the ball game already against the Hurricanes. That one against Bubba Bolden playing his first game of the season. Tackling is such a key to this coaching staff. Poor tackling here. First, it's Shaq Quarterman. Then it's the safety, Amari Carter. Then it's outside, the other safety, Gervin Hall. Three missed tackles, unable to get Hendon Hooker to the ground. And now they're inside the one. Not characteristic of this Miami Hurricanes defense. First and goal. On the jet sweep, another missed tackle. Touchdown, Hokies. Mitchell with the score. Let's go! Let's go! And that's Michael Pinky, the senior. I mean, on the last two plays, that's four missed tackles. And again, this is a defense. Manny Diaz, Blake Baker, the defensive coordinator, they pride themselves on being quality tacklers. When the offense is struggling and, and turning the ball over the way that it is, you need your defense to rise up and be able to make open field tackles. Poor job by Miami defensively on that set. As well as Virginia Tech is playing, Ray Lewis, Jonathan Vilma, John Beeson, and a whole bunch of Hurricanes from past are pretty ticked off at what they're seeing right now. Virginia Tech with 21 points off of turnovers. And those are where the early storyline continues to be now two things Miami interceptions with the Hokies able to capitalize on them and then two an abundance of Aaron tackling by the hurricane defense and that has them in a 21 nothing hole here at home Jeff Thomas on the return and chopped down nicely at the 23 yard line let's go back to Matt in the studio I got all right, Matt, back here. First down and 10 from the 23-yard line. Nikosi Perry in for his second series. Tate Martell, another quarterback, in at receiver. There he was right there. Nikosi checks it down and completes it to DJ Dallas at the 25-yard line. Let's go back to Perry's presence in this ballgame. You weren't quite crazy about the change. I just think that Jaron Williams, we were told yesterday, he won this job in the spring and fall camp because he was the more consistent quarterback. And he's played well to this point in the season. And now all of a sudden, three bad drives, and you're all going to pull, flip the switch and go to Nikosi Perry. It just seems like a quick, a quick hook on a quarterback that they spoke so highly of just yesterday. Boy, things changing swiftly for the Hurricanes. Complete under the middle. This is Hartley. And carrying that ball pretty loosely after fumbling the last time he touched it. Divine Diablo with the tackle on the play in a three yard gain. Put that football away high and tight. Already seen this hokey defense punch at the football and get one loose on the last possession. Some offense desperately needs a first down and to get some type of momentum, some type of rhythm going. Virginia Tech prior to this game had struggled in the first quarter today 21 on the board already a lot of that a result of their opportunistic defense third and three Perry incomplete at midfield intended again for Harley and he slammed to the turf by Connor the pass falling harmlessly incomplete and a quick three and out for the Hurricanes Mike Harley working out of the slot. Chamari Connor looks like he might have got there a little bit early. We hear the boos from the crowd here. Let's see if he got there early. That's definitely got there early. I could have easily yeah. drawn a flag. This call there by the official. Yeah. Concern etched across the faces of the fans here at Hard Rock Stadium for the Hurricanes. Grimsley. Back at his own 30-yard line for the Hokies. Headley with the punt, averaging almost 45 on the season. And it's going to be first and 10 
from the 20 yard line nothing on the return after that 52 yard punt. Well now time for today's Aflac trivia question the question is prior to Clemson this week when was the last time a team fell from the top spot in the AP rankings after winning a game. That's a rarity. Okay, so Alabama up Clemson Clemson Alabama those two teams seem to have had a lock on the number one spot in the last several years but right. I'm going trying to go back a little bit further than maybe that. Florida State back with Jameis huh. essentially We're talking Virginia Tech here Hendon Hooker having an auspicious beginning here in his first start of the season outside of the pocket behind the line of scrimmage it looks like there was a receiver in the area. Keyshawn King. Was in the area. Yeah, that was King that was close by. So no intentional grounding. Second and ten. Well, they set up, tried to set up the screen there outside to McLeese, but there were several. I apologize to Keyshawn King. Several offensive linemen were 10, 12 yards downfield before the ball was released. Easily could have been a legal offensive lineman down the field. Justin Fuente may have found his quarterback. They're going to run it on second and ten. Nowhere to go that time for Keyshawn King, who remains in the ball game. The stop made by Rousseau. And it's third and long with time winding down here in a great first quarter for the Hokies. A team that has had trouble scoring points early in ball games this year will find itself leading 21 to nothing. After the first 15 minutes of play, Miami had, has had their way in the second quarter so far this season, but the Hokies come into the second period hot. Some disgruntled fans here at Hard Rock hoping for a change of scenery in the next 15 minutes. On the handoff, this is McLeese. Got to the edge, got a seam, and guts that front and defense in a nice gain. Good block by the left guard, Smith, on the play. And a nice pickup for the Hokies of 26 yards. Third and 10 backed up. Miami won with a pass coverage defense. Big hole opens up off the left side. Good explosion through the hole by Deshaun McLeese. You mentioned it. Lasita Smith. Christian Darisaw on the left side doing a nice job open up running room Virginia Tech and that's a Virginia Tech flags down on the field offensive line dusty we haven't mentioned it yet they have two not one but two true freshmen mm -hmm. starting there with Hudson and Nestor and with more on freshmen after the call let's go down Outside, to Olivia defense jumping the neutral zone causing the offense to wreck five yard penalty five, first down. What about those freshmen, Olivia? Well, yeah, no one wants to be in that position. And Justin Fuente was telling us, you know, what can you do? We're this young. And of course, it's year four for Fuente. And he's still dealing with two freshmen, true freshmen, on his offensive line. And then Hendon Hooker, who's having quite a day. He being a redshirt sophomore. So with Ryan Willis not in there, it's really one starting senior. And it's working so far. On the carry, this is Keyshawn King. Tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by Michael Pickney. It's a very young football team, inexperienced, and we we're you know, talking with Justin Fuente yesterday. You know, he, he understands that. He talked about he wanted this team to be tougher emotionally, physically, and he recognizes that they're going to take some lumps, but he wants them to learn from those experiences and mature and get better from it. Second and six. receivers out to the right they run it right between the tackles and a nice sprint by Keyshawn King to pick up five yards Michael Pickney making another one of those tackles for the Hurricanes number 56 Pickney and Quarterman have been mainstays of this Hurricanes defense for the last three plus years there's a look at Pickney Quarterman's number 55 the guy missing is Zach McLeod who has decided to try and take a red shirt the three of them have been starters since their freshman year on third and short and the Hokies pick up the first down behind King 
And now time for a look at today's PlayStation player impact ratings. And one of the guys we were just alluding to, Michael Pickney, the rating of 88, Carter 99 for the Hurricanes. Michael Pickney just really does an excellent job being all over the field. Your prototype will linebacker speed to the football, use him in the pass rush game, and Amari Carter been a key piece of this secondary kind of retooling. Lost three seniors last year. Amari Carter stepped up and had a nice start to the season. First down and 10. Hooker tosses it to the field. And that time, some good open field tackling by the Hurricanes defensively. Garvin got there on the play along with Hall Jr. Love watching this linebacking court for Miami on tape. I mean, they get after it. They're an attacking style front. You see Shaq Quarterman running sideline to sideline, getting downhill, making a play on the near side, finishing off that tackle. These guys have been starting together, Jonesy, since the fourth day of their freshman season in the spring ball. It's incredible the longevity they both displayed here at the University of Miami. Yeah, football's important to them. That time it was his teammate Pinckney making the tackle on Hooker. And back to Shaq Quarterman, you know, Coach Blake Baker, the defensive coordinator, told us about his first meeting with Quarterman. He said, what are your goals? And Quarterman looked at him and got really emotional and got teary-eyed and said, I want to be one of the best to ever play football here at the University of Miami. When you consider the lineage here, that means a lot. Means a lot to both of these guys. And so does this third down to this defense. They got to find a way to get a stop here. play the Hokies drive and Justin Fuente gonna call a timeout for Virginia Tech well we mentioned the lineage Beeson Vilma and this guy a Hall of Famer too backers here Jonesy they got to step it up and yeah, start to play at a higher level back in the day Ted Hendricks the Raiders a little quarterback draw hooker Another productive run inside the 30 down to the 28 yard line Approaching 11 minutes to go here in the first half Hall making the tackle after the six yard gain keep in mind that guy you're looking at right there Hendon hooker About eight months ago folks. He was in the transfer portal. Okay. He was thinking about leaving and Those people who are at North Carolina A&T where his father played or trying to lure him there as he hands it off to McLeese he had a change of heart, decided to come back. Now finds himself in at quarterback. His dad, Allen Hooker, and a Miami player falls and grabs his hamstring there towards the bottom of your screen, trying to get off the field. That's Trayvon Hill, the former Virginia Tech Hokie. There's a look as he tried to get off the field and uh, grab the back of his leg. This is an emotional game for him. Yeah. Was a great player for Virginia Tech. He's trying to get off the field as he runs to the side. Wow. Goes down, grabs his hamstring. You know, we talked to the defensive coordinator, Blake Baker, on what the message to him this week was, and they challenged him to control his emotions, stay level-headed. Again, a guy who had a great career going at Virginia Tech and got kind of sideways last year after an Old Dominion game right. and at the end of the season opted to transfer to Miami after graduating from Virginia Tech and this is a game that he's had circled for quite some time. Yeah, if you ask him he's still not sure why he was dismissed from Virginia Tech but he's happy to be on the sidelines here for the Miami Hurricanes. One coaching of their best pass rushers. Coaching staff said he's been an excellent addition to the team. Hey, our main event on pay-per-view featuring champ and hometown hero Robert Whitaker taking on the interim champ, Israel Ananitsaya. Adesanya in the middleweight championship unification bout 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. To order the main card in English and Spanish, go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV and be sure to download the ESPN app if you're watching on your mobile device. ESPN2 and ESPN Deportes will have the prelims starting at 8 Eastern time. And Pacific. Who you got? Adesanya? I'll take Adesanya. Okay. I'm with you on that. Got a little bit more power. Second and six. Backside heat. The pass complete to Mitchell. 
And that's going to be a first down. I tell you, Hendon Hooker threw a pretty authoritative pass that time, Dustin. Had some zip on it. I like the way 82 tight end James Mitchell high points. It goes up and gets it. Garvin turns the edge, almost gets to the football. Strong hands by James Mitchell as he goes up, makes a nice grab for another first down. Talked about him being in the transfer portal. Chicago Bear and North Carolina A&T former player Tarek Cohen actually added him. Tariq Cohen added him on Twitter and said, hey, why not us, the alma mater at A&T? Right now he's with Virginia Tech, and they are going in for another score. Keen with his second touchdown of the day. Got a great block from Mitchell for the touchdown. And the Hokies have stormed into Miami Gardens and put one on the hurricane so far. Blown coverage. I mean, Dalton Keene just lined up in the backfield, sneaks out to the flats, and nobody goes with him. Easy walk-in touchdown again by Virginia Tech. For Keene, that's his first two-touchdown game of his career, with maybe more to come. One more look at this run by Keene after the catch. You took copious notes, man. You look like you were really... I had in. questions and I wanted answers, Jonesy. <laughs> I want the truth. Oh, if, I'm a, if I'm on the committee, I'm running from you, man. <laughs> Very educational, fun process. Gave me a really good look behind the scenes of what all goes in to the selection committee's process and try to help uh, better educate our fans as we get closer and closer to the CFP. Let's go back to the studio. My man's got answers. For the good of the sport, Dusty D is not on the committee. It was very mock. After a Bo Nix interception, Florida takes advantage. Trask to Josh Hammond. Gators take a 14-6 lead in the second. And then a little bit of a surprise in Morgantown right now. Austin Kendall TD, West Virginia, 14-7 in the second. All right, Nikosi Perry. In at quarterback still for the Miami Hurricanes after replacing Jaron Williams, who threw three interceptions in the first quarter. Flags down in the play as Jeff Thomas, one of the Hurricanes playmakers, makes the reception. Set up the wide receiver screen outside. Got to get Jeff Thomas touches. He's so explosive yeah. with the football. Give him space. There's no foul for OPI. The ball was touched behind the line. Second down. All right, let's take a look back at this. Look, there's nobody going to cover the flats. These guys are going to come down. We're going to see Dalton Keene just come outside. He's going to fake as if he's going to block, and he's just going to walk outside. Nobody covering the flats. A blown coverage by Miami and a walk-in touchdown for the second time for the junior tight end, Dalton Keene. Defensive coordinator Blake Baker got to be scratching mm. his head right now as to what's going on the defensive side of the football. Second and seven, nine minutes to go in the first half. Perry hands it off to DJ Dallas. And Dallas is going to be stopped up at the 30-yard line by Connor making another stop. Guys, starting quarterback Jaron Williams is back out. He did go in the locker room and he was waving his arms above his head to loosen up his shoulders seemingly. He did tell me this week that he's been dealing with a sore shoulder in his throwing arm and I did notice some tape underneath that shoulder pad. So could be a part of the issue, but he looks like he's back out and warming up. Well, that's uh, going to be interesting to hear what they say post game about that pass complete by Perry out to the 35 yard line to Brevin Jordan one of their top playmakers and their leading receiver that's going to be a hurricane first down at the 35 and you hear a very sarcastic sounding cheer coming from the hurricane nation that's where I'd be looking on third down this is one of the best players on this football team a real weapon as a pass catcher is improved as a blocker nice job going up and getting a key first down by Brevin Jordan Cozy Perry in a quarterback out of Ocala, Florida. Completes it into the short side of the field, out to the 45. That's Mike Harley making the catch close to the first down. And hey, with TJ out with an Achilles injury, that's right. Tom, Tom Jackson out with an Achilles. Ryan Clark stepping in, got his back, taking his spot with Boomer on NFL Primetime Sunday, 7 30. 
only on ESPN Plus. All the highlights, breakdowns, getting you ready for Monday night. Scott Van Pelt, Joe Tessitore will also be part of the fun. At ESPN Plus, download the app or go to ESPNplus.com. Be careful once you hit that age. Wide open. Knight with the grab. And a first and goal for the Hurricanes. All the way down inside the five. Just what the doctor ordered. Feed that man the football. A playmaker for this offense. Brevin Jordan on the bottom of your screen. Oh, screen and go. Got him. Fakes as if he's going to block on the screen. The defender bites, and he's wide open down the sidelines. Nice play call. An excellent execution by Brevin Jordan. Selling that he's coming to block. Gets the defender to commit. And then he's wide open. Ball put on the money by the new quarterback, Nikosi Perry. 51-yard gain on the play by Knight. Pardon me, Jordan. Perry rolling out, hits the edge, and incomplete. And the end zone intended for Brian Hightower. Boy, 6.38 to go in the first half. If I told you that Virginia Tech would be leading 28 to nothing, what would you say back? You're crazy, man. <laughs> I, would, I mean, based off of, you know, Miami coming off a of bye, what they put on tape so far this year, the way Virginia Tech played at home, an uninspired game against Duke. I didn't see it. Give a lot of credit to Justin Fuente, Bud Foster, for getting this team to respond and be ready to play here today. Second and goal, Perry. With a pull the trigger. Incomplete at the goal line. Knocked away nicely by Reggie Floyd, who's the only Hokie senior on that defense for Virginia Tech. Revan Jordan, the intended receiver. So it's third down and goal. How big is a touchdown here? Not a field goal, but a touchdown for Miami. It's huge, and I think you're already in the spot where you got to go for a touchdown regardless. Okay. You're down four scores, and we're approaching halftime. I mean, this is a two-down territory, in my opinion. I wouldn't be afraid to go back to Brevin Jordan. There he is, circled. Perry looks to him again, incomplete. He was locked on him the whole way, Dusty. Reggie Floyd, again the defender, and it's fourth and goal, and they have to leave their offense on the field here. Yeah, and I, I agree with the call, no question. Actually kind of double coverage there, both for Shard Ashby and the safety cheating over the top on Brevin Jordan. It's good coverage by Virginia Tech. So they've gone to Jordan twice. He comes out of the ball game here on fourth and goal. Big, big receiver down here at the bottom of your screen, number seven, Brian Hightower. He's six foot three. Nikosi Perry comes the other way into the end zone and picked off for the fourth time today. Farley stings them again. That's his second pick of the afternoon. New quarterback, same result for this Miami Hurricane offense. Tried to roll the pocket to the right. And Caleb Farley, for the second time today, steps in front. Miami can't get anything right. It's all about the Hokies in the 305. Back here at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida, Hurricane fans right now busted, disgusted, and not to be trusted. On first and 10, Hokies lean by four. A, a four-yard game, pardon me. Kind of like uh, Bob Marley, Rastafari. Remember he said, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Miami yeah, fans are listening they, to that right now. Uh, yeah, they don't want to hear everything's going to be all right. I don't think so. <laughs> they just want a touchdown. Wrong jam. Whew. Yeah. Change that tune. 28 to nothing. They need some Buffalo Soldiers to get some points on the board right now. Second down is six. You need a stop. Third and four. King on the run. And, uh, you know, there was a really kind of almost somber mood when we met with some of the Virginia Tech people during this week in our meetings. And, man, I tell you what, they might have been kind of just hiding a little bit of their optimism because they've come out here and played a spirited football game. And oh, man, man. Packed and jumping off sides. They did say that they practiced well this week, Coach Fuente did. Here's the call. Offside, 
defense number 71, jumping in the neutral zone, causing their offense to react. Five yard penalty results in the first down. I mean, you got them backed up, third and six situation, potentially get the ball back in good field position, and you give them a gift. That's just, mm. man, the hits just keep on coming. The mistakes are unbelievable here in this first half for the Miami Hurricanes. For a guy that has been coaching at the University of Miami since 2016, Manny Diaz went to school here in Miami at Miami Country Day, is from Miami, worked at ESPN, former colleague of ours as a production assistant. And speaking of colleagues, Zars back in the studio. Matt Berry, Matt. All right, guys, Dan Mullen, questionable fake punt. Didn't get it. Gave Auburn a short field in the first play. They take advantage. Bo Nix to Seth Williams. They kick the extra point. 14-13 now at the Swamp. All right, back here, second down and 11. Under four and a half minutes to go. Hooker hands it off again to Keyshawn King. No gain on the play. Sets up a third down and long for Virginia Tech. Who have been very opportunistic here in the first half. Nice play by Trayvon Hill. Haven't seen him making much of an impact so far. Afterward, had a little bit of emotion as we talked about the former Hokie playing against his old team. Game that means a lot to him. And, you know, you we were talking about yesterday, it was kind of a somber mood. And I got to give it up to Justin Fuente because the game plan is completely changed with Hendon Hooker. More quarterback run, utilizing the tight ends a little bit more. They scheme and have executed to yeah. perfection here in this first half. Yeah, they've found life with Deuce back there. Hendon Hooker pressing all the right buttons. We'll be back right after this. I'm intrigued to see if that Spartan defense can challenge the Buckeyes. Third and long. Hurricanes need to stop here. Here's the jet sweep. Robinson, the true freshman, nice one. Quarterman pushed him out of bounds. Man, he got a very favorable spot on the play. I think it's going to be an extra 15 yards afterward. I think they're going to get him for. Is that Shaq Quarterman, number 55? Okay. Maybe not. I, it was really close over on the sideline. We'll see. Flags on the play. Maybe there was a hold over on the sideline. Miami's pointing the other direction, so man, that would have been catastrophic. Mm. Been a disastrous first half for Manny Diaz and the Hurricanes. There are two fouls on the play. Holding offense number 81 at the distance of the goal. After the play, personal foul, defense number 55. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Wow, Shaq Quarterman, the senior linebacker with a personal foul, first down, Hokies. Oh. Mistake after mistake after mistake. The senior Shaq Quarterman. I mean, that's right on the line. I mean, but you got to be smarter than that. Had to be smarter than that over there. They were backed up on their own one yard line. Yes. That's the second penalty on this drive to aid them to first downs. Yeah, they are handing room service to Virginia Tech. Damn. Pickney, the lone senior linebacker, right there in the ball game right now. First down and 10, 338 to go. Virginia Tech in control. And that's McLeese picking up about four on the play. Rousseau making the tackle. Bubba Bolden comes in, gets a hit on that play. The USC transfer getting his first action for the Miami for the Miami Hurricanes. Yeah, Very excited to have him in the lineup. Yeah, there he is, number 21, the USC transfer, another Bishop Gorman player from Las Vegas on the team. Talented safety. I think he's got a bright, bright future here in South Beach. Second down and six, Virginia Tech. On the run, this is McLeese. Sets up a third down and two. Let's go back to the studio. All right, guys, coming up in the Lexus Halftime Report, Kyle Trask injured for the Gators out of the game. We'll update you on the accident at the Swamp, plus a 
big one for Michigan today at home at, at the big house and Texas in one on the road against West Virginia. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway join me coming up on the Alexis Halftime Report. All right, Matt, back here, 2.27 to go in the first half. And the Miami Hurricanes facing adversity here at home. Hooker keeps it and picks up the first down. What do you make of Hooker making his first start here today and the way that he's performed here in the first two quarters? He's been unbelievably impressive. And, you know, I give Justin Fuente a lot of credit for turning the page and recognizing Ryan Willis wasn't getting it done. He was turning the football over too much, and he's going to bring in a quarterback that's got a different skill set, and they're playing to that. They're changing yeah. a lot of what they do offensively, going to a lot more quarterback run, allowing Hendon Hooker to make yeah. plays with his athleticism. And, you know, he told them this week, have fun and let it loose. This is your opportunity. Take advantage of it. He's going to keep it on the run here. and. Pick up about two yards, and it's interesting, as Olivia reported a little bit earlier, Justin Fuente has been in his shoes. He said, I've been him before, and I never liked anybody. Oh, I don't never like to look over my shoulder whenever I had the job. So that was why, in part, he told his quarterback, go out there and have fun. Second down and seven. Hooker with plenty of time, and now sacked by Rousseau. He leads the team. Now with his fourth sack of the season, and at 6-6, he can reach out and get those quarterbacks, Dusty. Well, this young man is a physical freak. We're going to see him working inside. He's going to come all the way across. I mean, so he's working on the outside right there. Just gets a bull rush, gets up the field. He's 6-6. He's 260 pounds. He played receiver and safety in high school, was an all-state <laughs> wide receiver. He's packed on some weight, still has the athleticism. And talking with Coach Baker, they think he's got first day potential possibly. He's still trying to figure things out. And already, one of the most dynamic guys this Miami Hurricanes team has up front. Yeah, they said uh, in their own words, he is a beautiful looking player. Stepping off the bus and into the hotel lobby. He's, he makes that all, all hotel lobby team when you got a bunch of football players hanging around the hotel. Two years ago, the dude <laughs> was catching passes in high school. He was an all-state receiver. Long and lean, third and 17 as a result for the Hokies. In a very disconsolate Hard Rock Stadium, the home team down 28 0, being shut out. Hooker keeps it again and picks up about three, brought down by Silvera on the play. 104 to go in the first half, timeout on the field. Diaz trying to go five you know a little bit about the U. let me ask Dane you County baby yep Hit me. Miami's colors are green white and orange right. after this punt I want you to tell me what each color means oh, man. <laughs> on the punt one minute to go and uh, it's going to dribble down to the 16 yard line where guys are throwing hands on that 56 yard punt It'll be first down and 10 for the Hurricanes. So white, green, and orange. There okay. you go. Okay, I'm going to say the orange is for the fruitful, abundant land down here <laughs> they, in Miami. Come on. The green is for the money. Just I know say, that. Just say you don't green know. Come the on, land. man. Orange <laughs> is for me. the trees. I was green close. is for the leaves, and white is for the blossoms. There you go. Okay. All right. Oranges. Or, sorry, oranges, orange trees, obviously. Okay. Orange trees. Well, I was, I was getting there. I was getting to the oranges on the tree. You, you, know, I'm, you know I'm handicapped, right, because I'm colorblind. I know you're from Toronto. That's what I know. <laughs> 30 years in Miami, Nikosi Perry completes it. Down to the 45-yard line. First and 10 to Jeff Thomas. Nikosi Perry making a play, evades the rush, keeps the play alive, rolls to his right, and he finds a big-time shot down the field to Jeff Thomas. Got a player injured down there for Virginia Tech. Taiwan Garbutt, he wins on an inside spin move. Nikosi Perry rolls to his right, throws a dime on the move. Leads his wide receiver, and Jeff Thomas, very talented wideout, 
Makes the catch as he falls to the ground and rolls out of bounds. I can't tell you what this could potentially do from a momentum standpoint if Miami can get a touchdown before the half. Deshaun Crawford, the injured Hokie defensive tackle on the far sidelines being helped off. Yeah, he's the guy that brought the lunch pail onto the field today. He is their lunch pail player of the week for the Hokies. And, uh, you know, back to Jeff Thomas is another guy that uh, bumpy ride here at Miami at the end of last year with Mark Richt as head coach was thinking about transferring actually entered the portal was thinking about going to Illinois when Manny Diaz got the job decided to come back to the U and trying to have a big season here to help the Canes in the win column 35 seconds to go Perry into traffic incomplete as Harley couldn't hang on to it and he took a hit too. Quillen was there to knock the ball loose. And the clock stop is 28 seconds to go. Bud Foster still being aggressive, brought a corner blitz. Caleb Farley comes on the pressure. Nikosi Perry's hit right as he releases it. And he tries to hit Mike Harley right up the seam. As he gets delivered a big hit. Bud Foster for a defense that hasn't really performed well coming into today. They stepped it up big time for the veteran coach. No timeouts remaining. Perry's got to work quick. There's a flag down. Perry's going to take off with it. And he's forced out of bounds at about the 31 yard line. But this is going to be a hold against Scaife, number 51. 14 yard gain. Holding offense number 51. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Taiwan Garbutt, the defensive end who beat him earlier on an inside spin move. Take a look on the outside. Gets him with the rip. Gets him hooked a little bit. Garbutt had to leave the game. I'll be Virginia Tech's most dynamic pass rusher. Now this offensive line for the Hurricanes, conversely, Dusty, coming into the game, they'd given up 18 sacks. Amongst the worst in the nation, statistically. Perry trying to get it out and does complete. At the 38 yard line to go KJ fast. Osborne. They got to hurry they gotta up. Go. They 12 go. seconds to go. No timeouts remaining. Got to go. Trying to get into field goal range for Bubba Baxa. And one of the officials hit the turf. They stopped the clock with six seconds to go. They're about three yards outside of Baxa's field goal range. Oh, he got tripped up by Hewitt. By Hewitt. I know Nikosi Perry's just looking for an open target, but you've got to understand situations. You've got to understand that you need to try to find something along the sidelines and allow your guy to be able to get out of bounds, especially if he's going to be short of a first down. He's got to be really quick. Quick out, something very fast. Bubba Baxa has a season-long 50-yard field goal and a career-long 50 as well. He's 5 of 9 on the season, so... Uh, they still need about five or six yards to get that close. But once again, we revisit the interceptions have written the story of the day so far. These are the interceptions, three of them in the first quarter by starting quarterback Jaron Williams. And it got worse from there. That one in the red zone, which really hurt. That's been the prevailing line of the day. Five interceptions, and, and think about it. They hadn't thrown one coming into the game. Four, Four interceptions, pardon me. And then the fumble. Yeah. And that's right. You know, Williams coming in today had not thrown an interception, had completed 72% of his passes, and he got the quick hook after mm. his third interception. Miami doesn't have any timeouts remaining, Perry. Looks like they're going to try and throw this one at the end zone. Time will expire. Perry loads up and heaves it. Bounce up and caught. Touchdown. Miracle Miami. And showing a sign of life. It was tipped and then caught by Mark Pope. That is exactly what Miami needed to give them some life, some energy before the half.
They had two tall receivers down here with Pope. It looked like the ball got tipped right into the hands of Mark Pope. And all of a sudden, a little juice, a little energy <laughs> on the sidelines for the U. Dusty, that's just the way that you drill it, right? <laughs> I mean, you get guys down there and you tip it up and you give yourselves a chance. Dan Enos doing just that. 38 yards for the touchdown. I think it was 85 Will Mallory, the tight end. He was on the bottom side. The Kosi Perry rolls to the near sideline, puts a lot of air underneath the football. Mallory gets the tip. Pope gets the touchdown and wow. the Hurricanes on the board huh. for the first time today. Wow, what an end to the first half. As they say here in my... Some of the important and cogent numbers from the first half. Virginia Tech, 21 points off of five Miami turnovers. It'll be first and ten for the Hokies. Just a moment ago, Olivia caught up with Manny Diaz. Coach, you switched quarterbacks in the first quarter. What went behind that decision? Well, to be Virginia Tech, it's still you got to throw and catch. Yeah. And we weren't throwing and catching very well. Uh, we thought Nikosi gave us a better chance. Who gives you the better chance in the second half? It'll, we'll go with Nikosi. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Well, there's the answer that a lot of us were still wondering. It'll be Perry the rest of the way. We can talk about that when Miami gets on the, on the offensive side, but that's an interesting call here for a young quarterback this early in the football game to switch and now go with last year's starter, Nikosi Perry. McLeese on the carry. Guys, it's also important that Jaron Williams is back out here, you know, dealing with that shoulder soreness. He's back here and throwing just fine and is available, I'm told. But the uh, quarterbacking change takes on an even different context if you think about him not being injured then. Second down and eight. Hooker under pressure. Outrunning a couple of defenders and picks up well, about eight or nine yards. Pickney couldn't make the tackle, and uh, boy, Hooker looks to be shaken up there, having a tough time getting up. Hendon Hooker started this game, made his first start of the season for Virginia Tech, replacing Ryan Willis, the six forward senior. And he's being tended to by the athletic training staff. Ryan Willis warming up, meanwhile. Well, Ryan and Willis is in the ballgame right now because this guy, Hendon Hooker, number two, is on the sidelines. You see him stretching his legs. The good sign for the Hokies is that their starting quarterback was able to leave the field under his own power. So the starter for the beginning of the season, the first four games of the season, Ryan Willis, the former Kansas transfer, is taking this snap. Third down and one, McLeese in the backfield beside him. Police on the handoff. Not sure that he got the first down. Let's see where they spot this. Jonathan Ford and Greg Russo making the stop on the play for Miami. Good penetration up front. Going to come up a little bit short, Dusty. Pressure here by Pinkney, also off the edge by 30. With Pinkney here, we'll see 30 come there. They get excellent penetration up front. And a big key stop. Yeah. A rare three and out by the Miami defense this afternoon. Brad Burner's going to punt, averaging almost 48 yards per on the season. Jeff Thomas calls for the fair catch all the way back at the 12-yard line. Wow, what a punt by Oscar Bradburn. 54 yards into the humid air here in Miami. Remember, this is a team that last week got drilled by Duke, 45-10. Fumble, ball is loose in the 25-yard line. Scramble going to be picked up. A wide open, this should be a touchdown. It is. Calhoun throw, wide open, touchdown Duke. It's all going Duke's way tonight. A different looking crew in their defense keying the strong performance here. Connor and Diablo that time with the pressure on Perry. Batting that pass down. Divine Diablo. 
Number 17 right there, one of Bud Foster's defenders in the secondary. Bud Foster in his last season on the sidelines at Virginia Tech after 33 years. And you had to, it was, I couldn't wait to see how Virginia Tech would respond. An embarrassing effort on both sides of the ball mm. against Duke last Friday. They've shown up so far with a different attitude, different energy on this football field. Perry eluding the rush. Heaves it downfield and caught, no incomplete. Appeared to be caught initially by K.J. Osborne, but a great recovery by Reggie Floyd. We've seen Reggie Floyd, Dusty, make some great plays defensively here today. Breaking up a couple of passes, especially when he was matched up against Jordan earlier. This time against Osborne. K.J. Osborne goes up at high points to football. Excellent job as he's coming down with the ball to knock it out of his hands, force the incompletion, wearing that number one, having a heck of a ball game here so far. Osborne, the only, pardon me, Floyd, the only senior on that Virginia Tech defense. Perry is going to try and pass again. Laid it right in between the two defenders for the first down. The catch made by Brevin Jordan. And the Hurricanes are playing with a little bit of tempo now. Quickly up to the line of scrimmage. 26 yards on the game. Excellent throw right there by Nikosi Perry to Brevin Jordan. Right over the defender inside of the corner. Perfect placement on the sidelines and a huge conversion on third and ten. Where Perry seized the job from Malik Rozier a little over a year ago. Now he came into this season number two. Play action. Gets rid of it to the tight end out of the backfield. And a good open field tackle on the play. Connor making the stop. Jamari Connors had a heck of a ball game today. Got that initial pass breakup on the first interception. He's had a sack. They brought him in a lot of different pressure situations. Quality open field tackle by the nickel for Virginia Tech. Michael Parrott on the catch for the Hurricanes. Little receiver screen, tunnel screen complete. And on the move, it's Thomas. Thomas trying to make a play all the way down to the 40-yard line for Miami. Connor with another tackle, but not before Jeff Thomas Picks up 18 on the play, and Miami offensively showing some signs of life, Dusty. I love this play call. Get the ball to Jeff Thomas. Tunnel screen up top. Jeff Mallory's going to go here. Offensive line's going to come out, and they're going to get some key blocks. Jeff Thomas is going to come underneath. Tight end gets the initial block. The offensive lineman gets to the second level, and Jeff Thomas doing Jeff Thomas-type things in the open field. He was a guy that made some big plays for Miami last year in this game. Hurricanes defeated the Hokies 38-17 a season ago. This is Harris. Picks up about nine on the play. Good blocking up front by that offensive line to find a seam and make a crease. Well, coming up this week on Sunday NFL Countdown, Randy Moss ranks the best catches from today's college action. Plus, how Daniel Jones' Duke roots have turned him into the new king of New York and the legend Cowboys linebacker Leighton Vander. Vander Esch. Come on, man. Typo. Former Boise out. State <laughs> linebacker. Dallas Cowboys defense pretty cold this year, Jones. Coming off an elbow. Run it into the boundary this time with Harris. I wonder if uh, on You Got Mossed, we might see this catch right here. That, that's a great point. It could be. <laughs> if Randy was smart and watching, this will make it in there. Hey, one thing I really like about what I've seen here. They convert the long third down. Now you get a tunnel screen to Jeff Thomas and on back-to-back -back plays for the first time all day, establishing the line of scrimmage and running the football. The most solid drive we've seen all day for Miami here to start the second half. First and 10, Perry off the high snap. Got a one-on-one -on, -one on the corner. A little contact, incomplete, Osborne. And a flag on the play. Farley was defending K.J. Osborne. And there was a lot of pushing down the sideline there. And they had to, they had to throw this. It took them forever. Pass interference, defense number three. 
15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Took a while for the referee to pull the flag. This ball is underthrown. Okay, and KJ Osborne, the Buffalo transfer, he's trying to work back to the football, and Caleb Farley doesn't allow him. And then finally, there comes the flag. That's the right call. Ball underthrown. KJ Osborne trying to work back to it. Farley committing contact, not allowing him to. And now Miami inside the tip. Single back formation. Perry with a nice ball fake. Touchdown, Miami. Jordan with the catch. Love the play call. Play action pass. A quality fake by Nikosi Perry. Hides it. Hides the football. Brevin Jordan blocks, holds, and then sneaks out the back door wide open. Manny Diaz couldn't have drawn up the start to the second half any better. An impressive opening drive here in the third quarter. Perry's been the guy and will be the guy the rest of the way. That's what he told Olivia a moment ago. And Perry leads the team down the field into the end zone. Jordan with his second touchdown catch of the season. Nikosi Perry. They've seen this version of him before. And he's won some ball. Miami down by 14 points. Let's take one more look at the touchdown. What was the key? The key to any play action, watch Brevin Jordan. Watch him sell this block before he comes out late in the pass route. You got to sell it. Sell the block. Hold it. He's blocking. Now all of a sudden the safety thinks it's run. He's reading his key. Brevin Jordan sold that it was a run play with the blocking. Came out the last second. Wide open. Perfectly executed by Brevin Jordan. That is a fundamental of playing tight end in the play action pass game. Sell the run block. Sneak out late for the reception. Hooker back in at quarterback for the Hokies. Hands it off into the boundary. McClee stopped up for a loss of one on the play. That's Michael Pickney. Talked about him and Quarterman being starters since their freshman year. Pickney very much one of the personalities on that defense. Uncle Moe's in the building, Jonesy. Yes, you can feel it. It's tangible, it's real, and it's loud. Pulls it out on the jet sweep, and he picks up about four on the play. Maybe closer to five. It'll be third down coming up for the Hokies. Miami's defense got a three and out last time they were on the field. Hill in on that tackle for the Hurricanes. Trayvon Hill, he took the fake. Big hit on the man in the jet sweep motion, and a huge third down here for this Miami defense. Trayvon Hill. A lot of emotion right now, near side, defensive end. He was the guy unceremoniously dismissed. Mm. And it looks like this one's going to go against the Hokies. First start, offense, number 74, five-year penalty, third down. I think this means something to him, Jonesy? Yeah, definitely. A lot of emotion out there on the field right now. As you mentioned, this crowd has come to life. And now Virginia Tech, the team, making some mistakes here early in the second half. Hill has been vocal about how much he was looking forward to this game this week. Dismissed from Virginia Tech last year, who was one of their best players at the time. And passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Ma Student Section of the Year. The Miami Student Section is already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag Live Ma student section contest. Third and long, Hokies. Hooker up top and overshoots his receiver at the 40 yard line. So back to back, three and outs for the Hurricane defense. And Hill was hot on that one. Trayvon Hill with a little hit on the quarterback, just try to throw a go route all the way down the sidelines. Ball was overthrown. We'll see Trayvon Hill working inside. Kind of gets thrown into the quarterback. Shot on Hendon Hooker. 
Now, second big stop here to start the second half for this Miami defense. Osborne back there and Thomas calls for the fair catch and we got a flag down at the 40 yard line on that 51 yard punt. Officials still working this out. Doing the return, doing the kick, holding. Receiving team, number 24. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the kick. First down, Miami. Well, this has been a tale of two halves so far. The picture on the left is our super fan from Miami in the first half. Second half, much more to cheer about. A little bit more lighthearted amongst this hurricane rally. He was disgusted in the first half, and this place getting a little bit rowdy. I told you, man, don't worry. <laughs> about <it. laughs> Yeah, you did go Bob Marley on me. Miami scored on his last two drives. Little reverse, Harley got an alley, got a lane, and had a good block out in front by Osborne and Brevin Jordan. Jordan helping to spring him free for 23 yards. Complete player. Does a little bit of everything. I like this. Going to fake the toss. And we're going to see Brevin Jordan. Boom. And a perfect block to help spring Farley on the perimeter. As you mentioned, Osborne as well. Quality blocking out on the perimeter for a nice pickup on first down. That's their longest run of the day. This time they run it with DJ Dallas. Dallas stopped up. Gonna about to lose a yard on the play. Alan Tisdale making the stop. Speaking with DJ Dallas earlier this week at practice, and he said he often gets texts and phone calls from Clinton Portis, Willis McGahee, Frank Gore, some hurricane greats that have played in the NFL and done well at the pro level. And he said after that Central Michigan game, they they went a little bit dark on me. They it was their way of giving them the silent treatment, as if to say, you guys need to pick it up. That's what they find themselves doing here this afternoon. Perry going to be sacked back at the 27. Good rush and tackle by Ashby. A strong move right up the middle. Well, Bud Foster's defense isn't going to go quietly. Rashard Ashby, you're going to see him on the blitz. Really a quality linebacker. Donaldson tries to come down. Good strength and power by the linebacker to throw the big 345 pound guard out of the way and get to the quarterback, Nikosi Perry. Huge play for this Virginia Tech defense. All the momentum starting to shift to Miami, and they come up with a big negative play. That sets up a third down and 20. Loss of nine on that last play. Perry with a little bit of time here, and now eluding trouble, throws it up for grabs and picked off. Another Miami turnover. Ladler on the loose. Ladler all the way down to the two yard line. There is a flag. There is a flag. It could be a hold. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 25. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Wow. Incredible. And to think that's Jared Hewitt. Wearing the Frank Beamer number today, 25. Isn't this the exact opposite of the first half? Yes. It was Miami making these type of penalties. Oh, clearly. I, I mean, he got to be smart on that. Jared Hewitt's a leader of this football team. Grabs him up by the neck area and just throws him to the ground. Well after the play, Bud Foster, he doesn't like the call, but I'm sorry, coach. It's the right one. Yeah, and he was incredulous there on the sidelines. That's third and 20 yeah. on an interception. I mean, wow. What a game-changing type of play and mistake by the junior, Jared Hewitt. So Miami gets the ball first and 10 at their own 43-yard line. And Nikosi Perry has to feel that he got away with one there a little bit. Got to be more careful with the football. Rolling to his right. Tries to throw up a prayer. He is very fortunate that interception comes back. 
play fake. Perry with time on the post. And incomplete. Broken up nicely by Farley. Boy, Farley has done a really nice job on the corner, Dusty, for Virginia Tech. That pass intended for Pope. They had quality coverage down the field, running stride for stride with Mark Pope, who missed the Central Michigan game. And he told us he's explosive, a home yeah. run hitter. Had a huge game against Bethune Cookman. Excellent coverage down the field by Caleb Farley. Yeah, Pope, one of those guys, along with Harley, that run on the University of Miami track team as well. Speed to burn. Perry pump fakes and now tucks it under the run. Nikosi Perry is going to be marked about a couple feet shy of that first down. This first you think they got to go here, right? Well, it's third down. Yeah, they better yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a uh, third and short. First read wasn't there for Nikosi Perry. Looks like they're giving enough for the first down. They're moving the oh, sticks. Oh, they're going to give it to him. Okay. Nikosi Perry's first read wasn't there. He saw some green grass in front. Tucks the ball. And a nice run to pick up a first down. One thing I like to see Danny knows do. Remember last drive when he mixed in the run with Cameron Harris? Maybe get DJ Dallas and establish this rushing attack. You have to wonder. Ruling on the field is a first down. The previous play is under further review. Well, they're going to take another look at it. You have to wonder about how much the youth on that offensive line affects some of the play calling in the run game, especially for Dan Enos. Oh, okay. Big game. Hey, by the way, they moved that back to the uh, yard back, third and one. They run the ISO to the fullback, first man through, and the walk on will get the call. Jimmy Murphy, who scored his first collegiate touchdown a couple of weeks ago, coupled with a celebratory backflip, and he picked up the first down. You see how happy he is about it. That's a former walk on. Five foot seven, 185 pound fullback, old school fullback <laughs> dive to pick up a much needed one yard. Wow. From Avon, Connecticut, in the shadows of Bristol, Connecticut, not that far from our headquarters at ESPN. First down and 10. Perry, and he got his receiver, DJ Dallas, just laid out. He got drilled by Jalen Griffin. But this is the play that we're talking about. A few weeks ago, he scores the touchdown, Murphy does, and watch what he does afterwards. First of all, he's mobbed by his oh. teammates. And then watch this, Dusty. I like it. <laughs> hey, listen, walk-ons don't get in often. They don't get the spotlight often. You don't have a problem with if that. If I right? could have done that back in the day, I would have done that after a sack. Come on. That's sweet. How about the guy knocking him down? He lands on his feet like a cat. And what a sack. Great pursuit by Jalen Griffin making his second consecutive play defensively. Yeah, he can show out after great pursuit like that. It brings up a third down and long. That's the second sack of the season for Griffin. Looked like some miscommunication there. They went with a, he went to play fake, but there wasn't a running back there to play fake it yeah. to. It was gonna be a boot to the other side. And the defensive end, 41, Jalen Griffin comes clean. He's working on left tackle Zion Nelson, the true freshman, who's been pretty solid so far today, yeah. but a costly sack at a big point in this game. 18 years old, protecting your quarterback's blind side. Perry, they set up the screen. Harris, out near midfield at the 48-yard line, going to be short of the first down. It'll be fourth and long, a gain of six on the play, and we have an injured hurricane down on the field at about the 47-yard line. Tisdale making the play for Virginia Tech. Ja'Kai Clark, the true freshman right guard. Is that, is that Bud Foster out there? Looks, no. Pardon one me. of the one of the Virginia Tech coaches or athletic trainers out there. And yeah, Clark uh, really shaken up on this. Well, Coca-Cola invites you to share a Coke while tuning into this upcoming matchup tonight. Michigan State taking on Ohio State. That's at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. Number 25 against number four. Justin Fields had an amazing start to the season, but that defense, Kenny Willekes, Joe Bocci, 
Yeah. It'll be a nice test for him tonight. This is Ja'Kai Clark. He got rolled up on number 53 right there. That right leg gets overextended. He looks like he's in quite a bit of pain. He's going to try to limp off on his own. And it's crazy, Dusty. Those offensive linemen, they wear knee braces, and you still get rolled up on. It's still going to hurt. Absolutely. Right? Big man showing some toughness, grinding out and walking off on his own power. And it, he had to come out against Central Michigan. And when he did, DJ Scaife, the right tackle, slid down to right guard, and 74 John Campbell came in at right tackle now. We'll see. Maybe he can sit over on the sidelines and be able to come back in. But if he doesn't, they will have to do some shuffling along the offensive line. True freshman, 310 pounds. You know, we mentioned earlier Virginia Tech starting two true freshmen. This Miami yeah. offensive line starting two true freshmen as well. Ball start. Offense, number 24. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. So they'll move it back a little bit. Hezekiah Grimsley, meanwhile, standing in his own 10 yard line for Virginia Tech. This has been a afternoon where the Hurricanes have had a proclivity for numerous mistakes on both sides of the football. Headley is going to punt. Averaging 45 per year, part per per. I, I, I've, to, I've told myself I'm going to start bringing a thesaurus or a dictionary. <laughs> Proclivity, and, and I thought I got a college degree and all, but you take it to a new level. Tendency, yeah. tendency. <laughs> Fair catch at the 21-yard line for Grimsley, a 36-yard punt. I mean, I'm in all of your vocabulary and all, but hey, at least I knew about orange trees, green <laughs> leaves, <laughs> and white blossoms, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, well, I won't forget. Hopefully I can remember. I do know how many counties there are in the state. But go. How gonna... many? Oh, 67. <laughs> it only took third time's a charm. <laughs> See if Miami's defense can get another stop. Hendon Hooker in this offense. Haven't gotten much going here in the second half. Defensive coordinator for Miami, Blake Baker. There's a look at Keyshawn King. Brock down. Right around the line of scrimmage by Romeo Finley playing that striker position that the Canes have this year. You know, Manny Diaz, former defensive coordinator at Miami, he likes to play a lot of pressure, a lot of blitzing. They blitz about 40% of the time. One and a half to go in the third. Quarterback run game is a huge part of this offense in the first half. We haven't seen a whole lot of it here in the second. They're going to keep it between the tackles with King, and he's tackled by Michael Pinckney. Pickup of two yards on the play. Much more sound up front. The line of scrimmage here in the second half than they were in the first. Virginia Tech was really getting some things going in the run game. Has it been much there in the second half? Another big third down. This Hurricanes defense, you got to be mindful of quarterback run game with Hooker back there at quarterback. Third and long, eight to go. Hooker delivers incomplete. No flag on the play. Tight coverage there on Caleb Smith. And now in the second half, this Hurricane defense has produced three three and outs, including the former Hokie, Hill. Good initial protection by the offensive line. Better coverage. Mm. And it takes a big hit as he delivers the pass. Really good defense. Three straight possessions here in the second half for Miami. Bradburn has been really punting well. Drives Thomas all the way back to the 24. Got a wall there on the left side. Jeff Thomas still on his feet and finally tackled on Virginia Tech's side of midfield at the 45-yard line with 24 seconds to go in the third quarter a 53 yard punt but Thomas got 30 yards back on the return you know, talking about doing the little things right watch right here this is exactly how coaches draw it up and you're going to see it right here as well when you're because this is such a point of emphasis that you can't do blindside blocks okay mm. put their hands up get their bodies in front of the defender to set up the wall 
big return for just Jeff Thomas and quality execution on the special teams unit. That's how they coach it. Put your hands up. Show the ref. A absolutely. I, I mean, that's exactly how they coach it. Perry under duress and sacked all the way back at the 45 yard line by Pollard. Good heat up front by the Hokies. And that takes the Hurricanes back on their side of midfield. Fourth sack of the afternoon by Virginia Tech. I'm sorry, but I go back to why don't they run the football? Right? I mean, we, 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 the only time we've really seen them try to run the football, they had success on their offensive touchdown yeah. drive to start the second half. They continue to drop Brack, and Bud Foster continues to bring pressure. They're going to have to establish a line of scrimmage and establish a running attack before this game's over. Justin Fuente fired up for the Hokies. His team leading by 14 points going into the fourth quarter. About 35 minutes from here. Perry to start the fourth quarter almost picked off at the 43 yard line. Connor was the closest one to the football. Third and 19 coming up for the Hurricanes. Kosi Perry lucky right there Jonesy. That was way off target. The only person even within the even close to that football was a Virginia Tech defender. And I have to be careful with the football at this juncture. They cannot afford another turnover. Perry replaced Rogier last year. At times, Perry has had some maturity issues, but since grown and gotten through those, looking at third down and 19. Backside pressure. Steps up, flag down, Perry down at the 43 yard line. Belmar beat Nelson, the starting left tackle. And we got a hold on the play. Holding, offense number 60. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. It's that true freshman, Zion Nelson, who's had his struggles this year. Emmanuel Belmar going to be working up top. Working on Zion Nelson. Just beats him with a speed rush, gets the rip up. Definitely held him. Belmar continued to the quarterback and draws the flag and gets the sack. Quality pass rush and rough couple of series in a row now for Zion Nelson. I'll tell you what, that Bud Foster defense is looking like a Bud Foster defense today, Dustin. That's exactly right. Takeaways, pressure in the quarterback, been aggressive staples of who Bud Foster's been for 33 years now at Virginia Tech. Grimsley watches the ball bounce harmlessly into the end zone a 58 yard punt by Headley but it'll come back out first and 10 for Hooker at quarterback. Bounce up and caught touchdown miracle Miami and showing a sign of life. It was tipped and then caught by Mark Pope. That gave us a ball game, Dusty. Yes, it did. It gave us a ball game. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage by Jonathan Ford. Incomplete. That was a key juncture in the game. It gave the Hurricanes temporary life. And they held the momentum there in the third quarter. Virginia Tech only had 15 total yards in the third quarter of play. Going to be interesting to see, Dusty, now if Hooker can get them back to where they were in the first half offensively. Second and ten. Play clock at six. Keen in motion and he sets. They hand keep it with Hooker. And he's going to pick up about seven yards. And then Hooker got a nice block out front on John Garvin. Who is coming off the edge? So it's third down and short coming up for Virginia Tech. And Jonathan Garvin got to make that tackle one on one on the edge. Nice job by Hendon Hooker to power through the arm tackle and get to the sidelines. That quarterback run game and a big key and a bit of curveball here today with this Virginia Tech offense. Got to be mindful of it here on third down. Hurricane defense had three three and outs in the third quarter. They come with a little pressure. Hooker has a man wide open. Room service. Caught. Mitchell. Dragged down at the two yard line by Bolden. 
What a play and connection from Hooker to Mitchell. 67 yards and all. Wow. Blown coverage. Little pick play outside. The Damon Hazelton came in on a slant. Was able to create a little rub there with the safety Bubba Bolden. We met with James Mitchell yesterday from a small coal mining town called Big Stone Gap, Virginia. And he was very much in the belief that his team was going to come out and play well this afternoon. Big catch. Huge play. The police in the backfield. Hooker pulls it out. Touchdown. That's the third one of the day for Keene. And the Hokies storm back to start off the fourth quarter. Play action pass, the aggressive Miami defense playing for the run. And Dalton Keene wide open in the end zone for his third touchdown reception of the afternoon. There's a reason why Keene was voted all ACC honorable mention to start the season. He has been huge for the Hokies this afternoon. The big play, of course, the catch by James Mitchell. Went over 60 yards to set up the touchdown. It felt like in the third quarter, momentum had shifted to Miami until this drive. Little rub there. Bolden gets caught. Mitchell wide open. Huge play, which leads to a little play action. Pass to Dalton Keene, Virginia Tech with a firm lead late. 1944. You got to be careful with the sun down here, Dusty. I'm just letting you know. I want you going back home all red and burnt. Tell Olivia. <laughs> Olivia was hanging up by poolside the last couple of days. Liv you, think Libby, you think Olivia Libby. was using her sunblock? Olivia had that SPF 30, right? I always wear 50 plus, guys. Blonde hair, blue eyed. That sunburn is no joke. And Dusty allegedly was laying by the pool. Allegedly. Mm. Well, you know what? Speaking of burns right now, Perry and that Miami offense has been burned repeatedly by throwing the ball away. They've turned it over way too many times. Five turnovers. First and ten, 12.43 to go in the fourth quarter. Perry completes this one to Harley as we go back to the studio. All right, guys, Auburn started this drive at their own five, had a look to take the lead or get within it, and Bo Nix throws the pick to Donovan Steiner. Right now, heading to the fourth, 17-13, Florida. Well, a lot of football to go there up five hours north of here in Gainesville. Second down and three. Whistle and we got some flags down in the field. Ball start. Offense number nine. Five yard penalty. Second down. Well, Bud Foster has already announced that this is going to be his last year as defensive coordinator at Virginia Tech, and he's one of the best ever to do it, folks, simply put. I mean, look at the amount of guys that he has put into the league. Sacks today, interceptions, points allowed. I mean, check, check, check. Your typical Bud Foster type yeah. of football game here today. Five sacks, five takeaways. His imprints and staple are all over this football game. Perry completes it to his tight end, Brevin Jordan. And Jordan over the midfield line to the 49. Picks up the first down. You know, I think about one of the first times I met Bud Foster doing a Virginia Tech game in Blacksburg down at the field. Looked over and pointed to one of his DBs, number 27 at the time. I said, Coach, that guy looks real good. I said, Mark, that, that guy's name, he's a freshman. His name is Jimmy Williams. <laughs> he's going to be in the league for a long time. <laughs> Bud knows how to pick. recruit them, yeah. He knows how to recruit them. Miami going to try and run it here. DJ Dallas with nowhere to go. 24 years as a defensive coordinator, 33 years at Virginia Tech. Just an unbelievable career. And, you know, he's at peace with his decision. 
Yeah. You know, he's done all he can really do. He's going to stay with this university. He's going to spend more time with his family, his three grandchildren. And, you know, talking with Dan Enos yesterday, said the word icon. And, and Manny Diaz said, the thing is, when you pop in the tape, you can see in his players Bud Foster and, and those players exemplify what he's about and the way he coaches defense. Yeah. And Manny Diaz said, you can't give a better compliment to a coach. As respected a guy as there is defensively in all of college football, and I just say a salute to him yeah. for what he's done at Virginia Tech for over three decades now. And really as dialed in and passionate and excited and pleased as I've watched Bud Foster be all game on the sideline. He was cool, calm, collected before the game, sitting on the bench. And I said, Coach, what you doing? He said, I'm taking it all in. This might be my last time at Hard Rock Stadium. Yeah, Olivia, it was a wonderful moment of introspection and presence and thought. I'll start. Offense, number 55. Five yard penalty, third down. But when the game starts, he brings that heat. Mm -hmm. oh. he, he got a fastball still now. Yeah, he does. He can still throw it too. 33rd year on the staff. I remember the, one of the other memories was that uh, I think it was 19, a Sugar Bowl game against Texas back in the early 90s, circa 92, 93. And uh, boy, Bud Foster, really one of the great guys in the business. To a young play-by-play uh, -play guy still trying to figure things out. Pass complete to D. Wiggins, his first reception of the game. With under 10 minutes to go, Miami moving the chains. Solid catch over the middle by D. Wiggins. Strong hands to get fully reached out and bring that ball in for a nice first down. Hurricanes going quick. Perry with the pump fake now takes off and runs it. Kosi Perry can end up about three yards shy of the first down. His second down coming up, picked up seven on the play. Perry out of that central Florida city, Ocala. Throws the ball at the 22 yard line. Play action and Perry going to give up another sack. That offensive line. Giving up another sack, the sixth one of the afternoon. That time it was Jalen Griffin. While well, ACC Network is your home for more ACC sports, visit getacc.com to check for providers in your area. If you don't see yours listed, contact them and demand that they carry ACC Network. Get on that. See all the great games, football games, and otherwise. Coming up this fall and winter and beyond. Third and nine coming up for Miami. And you got to think that they're uh, a bit two down territory here. Absolutely. Four down territory. Got to go for it. Yeah, it's, it's go time. Uh, nope. If they can't get this on third down, they're definitely going to go for it. I mean, down three touchdowns, eight and a half minutes. You know, Dan Enos was telling us yesterday, he thought after that first game against Florida, they gave up 10 sacks. They've been better, and he thought that it was going to trend in a better direction, but especially here in this second half, Virginia Tech getting a lot of pressure on the Kosi Perry. The ball's going to come out a little bit faster. Perry scrambling for his life again. Completes it to DJ Dallas. Way short of the first down. Good pressure by the Virginia Tech front. Garbutt. Taiwan Garbutt with a bull rush on DJ Scaife. Flushing the Kosi Perry outside the pocket. It will locate his check down the sidelines. Fourth down and six. Miami needs a score to stay competitive here. My tight end, Brevin Jordan, if I got the chance. Little trips right formation. Perry goes to his outside receiver for the first down catch made by K.J. Osborne. Osborne has made an immediate impact with Miami. He and offensive coordinator Dan Enos actually got on campus the same day. And they think so much of Osborne that he was their media day representative at ACC meetings. It's a young, inexperienced receiver room. And they said from day one he walked in, it's kind of take ownership of it, been a leader. Yeah, we've seen some Buffalo guys transfer yeah. to other 
FBS schools and be successful Power Five conference schools. Mabry uh, tied in up at Maryland and KJ Osborne here at Miami. Into the end zone, Perry <laughs> caught. Touchdown, Canes, Thomas. And Miami trying to stay alive. Thomas got in behind Armani Chapman. And for Thomas, that's his first touchdown catch of the season in the sixth of his career. Nikosi Perry puts a lot of air underneath the football. He gets an excellent adjustment in the air by Thomas to locate the football and come down with it for a big touchdown. Seven minutes left. This game isn't over yet, Jonesy. A lot of football still left to be played. Not by any stretch. After the extra point could only be a, a two touchdown game. The extra point good by Bubba Baxa. Thomas capping that 75 yard drive. His first start of the season has had himself an afternoon. That extra dimension that he brought to the field today has really helped out the Hokies. Something that Ryan Willis was unable to do in the first four weeks. He's been fantastic. I love the game plan. Easy throw, screen game, play action pass, a lot of throws to the tight end. Hits the big pass in the last drive to James Mitchell. And his ability to utilize his athleticism, the quarterback run game, been such a key today. Impressive start for Hendon Hook here on the road against a quality Miami defense. His dad was a North Carolina A&T standout, Allen Hooker, as we check in with the studio. All right, guys, checking in on Texas, West Virginia. This game was close. West Virginia's turned the ball over the four ball. times. There, Devin Duvin, a first career rushing touchdown. Texas just tacked on another one, starting to create some separation in the fourth on ABC. All right, Matt Berry, and back here, ball on the 19th, first down and 10 for Virginia Tech. I want to tell that Hendon Hooker story one more time. Back in January, he entered the transfer portal. Thought about leaving. But here he is some 10 months later and starting a quarterback for Virginia Tech. Michael Pickney making the stop on the play. And after he entered the transfer portal, Chicago Bears running back Cohen, an AT and AT grad, and start with the Bears, said, hey, maybe you want to check us out, the alma mater. He held firm. Funny how things work out sometimes, Dusty. Yes, it is. And then when you get an opportunity, making the most of it, making it count, and doing exactly what his coach said, just go out there, don't worry about anything, and have some fun. He had only thrown two career passes coming into this game as they hand it off. Cleese gets back to the line of scrimmage, and very quickly it's third down coming up. And uh, timeout. We're going to call a. Timeout, one of the three remaining. Like I said, man, there's a lot of time left in this football game. 621. Yeah. Hey, it's been a wild game so far. We've seen interceptions, different quarterbacks. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. It could get crazy. Running out over the turnover chain and the turnover rings today because the lunch pail mentality of the Virginia Tech Hokies has been the predominant and prevailing stamp on this game. We've only seen those rings come out a couple of times not enough for the liking of the hurricanes but dalton keen has had three touchdown receptions today big third down coming up for hooker can he convert he sacked back at the 15 and miami stays alive quarterman and hill the former Hokie, getting the sack on his former teammate Hendon hooker and they'll have to punt with 615 to go Take a look here. We'll go with Hill. Quarterman's going to come as well. They needed pressure. Able to get pressure. Sorry, Pink needed to come. Or Quarterman comes late. Hill gets him. Quarterman comes at the very end. Huge play for Trayvon Hill against his former squad. And Miami very quickly calls a timeout. 6.15 to go. Well, the defense needed to get a stop. And they actually came up with one. Some of the trends that have developed, the five turnovers, the biggest one. And what about that Virginia Tech defense I led by the front? It's been incredible today. He stepped up. I mean, it's been everything. <laughs> I've never seen a Hail Mary in person before. That's the first time I've ever seen it. You know what? That's crazy. 
and it came at a good time in terms of the competitiveness of our game here. Fair catch called at the 39 yard line by Miami and Jeff Thomas who caught the touchdown a moment ago 607 to play one more look at one of the more memorable players of the game Perry and the jump ball the tip and then caught by Pope in the end zone but it was Mallory the backup tight end that tipped it and kept the ball alive. Kosi Perry was seven for seven 75 yards and a touchdown pass on that last drive. See if he's got any magic here left. Under heat over the middle wide open at the 45. Great spin move by Thomas. And Thomas stops the clock steps out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Miami moving quickly with the first down picked up 26 starts with the protection protection solid. Jeff Thomas finds a soft spot in the middle of the field sets down and then he puts Reggie Floyd into a spin cycle before he steps out of bounds. First and ten. Perry downfield incomplete intended for KJ Osborne. But boy Belmar was right in his face applying the pressure. Manuel Belmar Taiwan Garbutt Jalen Griffin. All three of these defensive ends today for Virginia Tech. Constant pressure on Nikosi Perry and Jaron Williams early. Taking advantage of a Miami offensive line that struggled with protection all year long. Yeah, they got to give him some time to throw the football if they want to have any chance of winning here. Perry gets rid of it in time, complete. That's going to be Brevin Jordan with another Miami first down. And a flag down as well. Jordan having a career day here for the Hurricanes. I think this might be offensive pass interference. Yeah, it's going to come back. Pass interference. Offense number six. 15 yard penalty. That's going to go against a disbelieving Mark Pope. Mark Pope. That was the end of the play. And it's going to come all the way back. Looks like they're going to cancel the penalty. The play is the first down. Well, some confusion there between the referees. Yeah, forget what they just called. It's a first down from the 24. Called off the penalty, gave them the first down. Perry looking for a receiver and wisely was outside the pocket. The receiver in the area, number 13, DJ Dallas. Good pressure by Alan Tisdale. It's second and ten for Miami. Five seventeen to go. Down fourteen points. That was kind of bizarre there. Yeah, I'm still trying to. We didn't shake we didn't, my head. We didn't see the offensive pass interference, but they threw the flag and then gave no explanation. Really, even said that they were calling the flag off. You went to referee camp this summer, right? I did. Did they teach you what to do when that happened? They didn't teach us what to do. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's out of the, that's off script, out of the book. That wasn't on the test, huh? No. Second and ten. Perry working out of the shotgun. Was looking to get rid of it quickly. Tried to spin out of trouble. And a late flag coming in as Tisdale delivered a forearm shiver on the hit. Kendricks was there as well, the true freshman. Mario Kendricks was taking into the ground, and 34 Tisdale comes First in. First foul, targeting, defense number 34. At the distance of the goal, automatic first down. Is under further review. Watch the end of the play here. 23 Kendricks working well in the center. Good rush. Boy, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. There's one more look, another angle. 
I'm not sure that he used the crown of his helmet or anything on that. Look. I think by the letter of the law, that's going to be a targeting. Anything deemed above the face mask or to the side is deemed the crown of the helmet. Can I say something? Yes. I'm going to referee school with you next year. Well, <laughs> dangerous hit. We're getting that involved deep here. launching, yep. upward thrust, or severe strike. There was no launch there. That wasn't one of the components. The helmet part of it was a little bit more of a gray area. I do like the fact that all of these targeting penalties are reviewed now. Yes. And they have to meet all the components to be confirmed. And we've seen a lot more this season. I just got the numbers the other yesterday on an email. We've seen a lot more of these overturned than we had previously. So it's a good job by these guys understanding that it's not just 15 yards. It's an ejection from the game. And at this point, you have to miss the first half of next game, so they want to make sure that they get these calls right. This one's really close to yeah. me, Jonesy. I don't, got to be honest, sometimes I don't. And correct, not ejected, disqualified is a new the verbiage language, they've yep. used this year. That's the guy that they're looking at, Alan Tisdale, in the hit on quarterback Nkosi Perry. Nkosi Perry. See, I don't, I got to be honest, I don't think I see a launch. That's, that's what I had said initially. I, 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 it had to have been. We'll see what the referee something says. Something else. After the review, there is no foul for targeting. Third down and a 25 yard line. Good for the referees. Yeah. Working hard and trying to get that right. Take a look at it one more time. No launch, head up. I think it was incident. I yeah. think it was incidental con helmet to helmet contact. So good by these officials working together, taking their yeah. due diligence and getting the right call. 5:09 to go. Clock running. Perry on third and long for the Canes, trying to stay alive. Wide open. Thomas, touchdown, Miami. Now down by just a touchdown. Jeff Thomas with another touchdown catch. His second of the day. Got in behind Caleb Farley. And Perry laid it right in there. And they're going to go for two here, Dusty. Why? They're going to go for two. And Nikosi Perry, Brevin Jordan's in a quarterback. Sorry, no. DJ Jordan. Dallas. Taking a direct snap here. Dallas has to outrun a couple of guys. Turns a corner. Looks like he extended. Got it. What an individual, inexorable effort by D.J. Dallas. He launched his body into the end zone, extended his left arm. I'm still somewhat perplexed on why they went for it. <laughs> he stuck on that. <laughs> they got two. I mean, uh, like you said, individual effort. D.J. Dallas carrying it like a loaf of bread. Don't matter. Puts a little stutter step on Farley. Full wow. extension over the pylon. That's an excellent display of athleticism and sheer want to. D.J. Dallas was not going to be denied as he does it all on his own to make this a six-point ball game. D.J. Dallas was telling me earlier this week at practice he lost 20 pounds to get lighter, faster, and stronger. He did it by eating fish for an entire month.
mixed in a little bit of venison from time to time, but he looked really explosive on that touchdown run. I'm guessing that's going to be because of analytics. If he doesn't get it, they can still tie. If he does, they go for the win. Watch this route right here by, by Jeff Thomas, and then he's going to win outside. He's going to shake out Caleb Farley. It's an excellent route. Gets a little stutter step before he breaks it off to the corner, starts it inside, a little stutter, beats Farley, and a dime delivered by Nikosi Perry, who has really stepped up and made some key plays here in this second half. And then this looks, is one man just wanting it more than the other guys. What a play wow. by DJ Dallas. That little hesitation move, Dusty, that he made to freeze the defenders allowed him to turn the corner. And now the margin is just six. Been a crazy football game here the, in Miami. The Hokies, Dusty, have a bunch of guys up around the 45-yard line just in case of an onside kick. But might be a little bit too early for that, though. Kings are going to trust their defense. As we go back to the studio, big finish coming up. Let's go to the studio first. Yeah, guys, talk it. All right, Matt, back here, 4.55 to go. Hendon Hooker with a defining moment in his young career here on this potential game-closing drive. They set up the screen complete and good open field tackling that time on James Mitchell by D.J. Ivey. The Miami Hurricanes with one timeout remaining. They need a stop. Boy, it feels like a different venue than the first half, you guys. These fans are loud when they boo. They are much louder when they cheer. These dark gray clouds are rolling over the opening at Hard Rock Stadium. Raindrops falling on us now. It is celebration mode on the Miami side. It's starting to rain, and that's an incompletion. Getting a little wet down there on the field, intended for Damon Hazelton, broken up nicely by Bandy, one of their most experienced corners. And it's third down and long for Virginia Tech. Pass a, too, pass a little bit too much inside from Hinden Hooker. Allowed Bandy to make a nice play on the football, setting up third and long. And if you're the Miami pass rush, ears pinned back, looking to go get a quarterback. Huge play here late in this football game. Number 29, Dalton Keene has been key for Hooker so far this afternoon. Has time, incomplete, in and out of the hands of his receiver, Phil Patterson. So the Hokies will punt on fourth down. The Hurricanes still alive. And as you mentioned, rain coming down. Wonder if a wet ball had anything to do with this. Pass was a little bit inside, but Phil Patterson clearly could have made this catch. He runs a good route. Passes there on time. He's working back to it. Just goes right through his hands. He's hey. right at the sticks. Yeah, you're gonna catch that. Got to help out your front, your sophomore quarterback. Brad Byrne with a long punt all the way down to the 31 yard line. 43 yards. Nothing on the return. 4:06 to go. I'm gonna tell you, man. This has been a crazy day. <laughs> Five turnovers. Seven sacks for Virginia Tech. We've seen four different quarterbacks. A Hail Mary, first time I've been at a game and even seen one live. The Miami two-point conversion. Rain's coming down. Yeah. What's next for this final four minutes? <laughs> Nikosi Perry has had himself an afternoon in relief. 367 yards passing. Is there one more moment left? He's going to take off. Perry picks up about seven on the play. You can see the rain now really starting to come down. And you know what? It's about 7 o'clock Eastern time here in Miami. That's about what happens every day. Set your watch to it, huh? Yes. Plenty of time right now. Miami still has one timeout. Second down and three. Thomas split wide to the top of your screen. Four receivers in on this formation. Perry hands it off. First man through is DJ Dallas. DJ still spinning. DJ, play that song, DJ. Touchdown, Canes.
62 yards for the touchdown. DJ Dallas appeared to be stopped up in that first wave of potential tacklers. First unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Hurricanes. He knew DJ Dallas had that explosiveness in him. And how about that? The two-point conversion as he dives in, gets the ball over. He has played the role of superhero here late for the Hurricanes. Amazing run to give the Hurricanes potentially their first lead of the ball game. Bubba Baxa with the extra point. Dings it off the upright oh. and blew it. Oh. He missed the extra point. <laughs> After all that, Bubba Baxa oh. leaves the game tied at 35. Dusty, you asked what was next. <laughs> oh, this is Matt crazy. Barry. Ah. Matt Berry, we can't believe it either. Back to you. Look, I'll tell you guys what's next is Georgia, Tennessee. That's going to kick on ESPN2 until the conclusion of your wild game finishes. But right now, Georgia, Tennessee over on ESPN2 as we all wait with bated, entertained breath to see how Miami, Virginia Tech ends. Okay, and all remember, right, there's a personal foul now, so it's going to give them better field position. They have to back up 15 to kick it from their own 20. Wow. Incredible. What a game. Missed extra point, Dusty Dvorak. Hey. They went for two and got the two on the previous touchdown, and it was just a six-point game. The easy extra point, apparently not so easy. Speaking of incredible, after this kick, I'm going to take you back and show you a replay of that DJ Dallas run. Indi excellent individual effort, but also his teammates down the field continuing to block late in the play to help escort him into the end zone. What a fantastic ball game. And you've got a young man making his first start on the road in Hendon Hooker. Yeah. Still got a chance to play hero for this Hokey football team. Bubba Baxa can make up for that misfortune a moment ago with a good kickoff here, and he drills it all the way down to the nine yard line. Keyshawn King on the return for the Hokies and chopped down at the 35 yard line. Tell me about what happened on this Dallas run. What's well, missed tackles? Okay, we're going to take a look at 17 Divine Diablo as well as 34 Alan Tisdale. It's excellent effort right here, guys. Missed tackles by both of these guys. DJ Dallas ducks underneath the arm tackles, and then he's out in the open field, and it's a sprint. But he's also got KJ Osborne. He's got Jeff Thomas blocking down the field, helping escort him into the end zone. What a play, what a game. Hooker taking a shot up top. One-on-one -on -one coverage, what a catch over the shoulder by Hazelton. Wow, over the top of Bandy, the defensive back. First and 10 for the Hokies. That's how you answer. Throw of the day so far for Hendon Hooker. Just a go route. Puts it in perfect position over the shoulder. Coverage is okay by Bandy, but a dime delivered in crunch time by Hendon Hooker. 29 yards on the pickup. First down and 10. For 9 of 19, but he has been very efficient and has added a running portion to this potent offense today. Keen in motion, and they hand it off. McLeese puts his team in field goal range. Brian Johnson has a career long of 45 yards for Virginia Tech. The nose of the ball is at the 33, which would make it a 50-yard field goal. Approaching two minutes to play. Johnson's long this year is just 35, if he gets the opportunity. Hooker perhaps thinking about six instead of three right now. Second and nine. He keeps it on the run. Ran through one tackle, stays in bounds. Down at the 29 yard line. Sports Center from LA tonight after Washington Stanford with Lyndon Stan. They'll have 
Herbie's biggest takeaways from the day, Twins, Yankees, Rays, Astros, as well as UFC 243 post-fight coverage, Cormier's analysis, Sports Center after college football on ESPN, as well as the ESPN app. Dusty, you okay? <laughs> this is the way we liked it, right? Man. <laughs> There's Brian Johnson. It's 3 of 11 on field goals over 40. Partner, it looks like that rain has subsided quite a bit. It's coming down just five minutes ago pretty substantially. On third and five. Hooker has a man open. They left Keene all alone. That's the wrong guy to leave open. Keene on the loose and drilled at the four-yard line. But first and goal with 1.36 to go. What a great play call and delivery by Hendon Hooker to pick up 25. What's well, the same play they ran earlier in the first quarter on the first touchdown. They went back to it. Misdirection. Boot Hendon Hooker to the right. Sneak Dalton Keene out the backside. We'll show it to you right here. He's going to come out here, and he's just going to come across. It's a beautiful play design. Misdirection. Miami overflowed. Went with it. Dalton Keene out the back door. And a huge pickup putting Virginia Tech inside the five. The play calling today by Justin Fuente setting up his quarterback have been outstanding. Hooker hands it off to McLeese. McLeese. Touchdown, Hokies. They go ahead. That's an answer. What an answer by Virginia Tech. An impressive go-ahead drive led by quarterback Hendon Hooker. Take a look and see if he gets in. The knee. I think that's a touchdown. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's going to be anything. I think when his knee touched down, Dusty, the ball had already crossed the plane of the goal line. Totally agree with that. That looks like a touchdown. I definitely don't think there'll be indisputable evidence to be able to overturn it. For McLean, if it stands, that's his first rushing touchdown of the season. And the six of his career, the ball is There's the ball right there. Breaking the plane as his knee hits the ground. This call is going to be confirmed. Wow. And you hear the well, smattering of cheers from the Hokie fans that have made the trip here from Blacksburg as McLeese puts his team up by six points. Hendon Hooker. In his first start, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, he had two pass attempts in his career. This is a team that lost 45-10 to Duke last Friday night at home. They changed quarterbacks. They had a great week of practice. They come on the road, and he just led a huge drive to put them up. But let me tell you something. There's a minute three, and Miami's got a timeout. And the way this game's gone, who knows what's going to happen. Matt, we've seen a lot of miracles. Back to you. Guys, what a remarkable game. Just wanted to remind you that Georgia and Tennessee has already kicked. It is over on ESPN2 at the conclusion of Virginia Tech Miami. We will move that over here to ESPN. But if you're looking for Georgia Tennessee, head over to ESPN2 for now. All right, so while uh, we get ready to play network gymnastics with the switches, we're going to fill you in on the remaining 103. Nikosi Perry, you saw a shot of him, the quarterback for the Hurricanes. A moment ago on the sidelines in the first half he came in in relief of the starting quarterback Jaron Williams and he is approaching 400 yards passing on the afternoon already with four touchdowns and he's had some impressive moments as well but 103 to go Dusty just one timeout remaining for the Hurricanes. Jeff Thomas and KJ Osborne back deep. The big play of that drive for Virginia Tech was that pass by Hooker to Hazelton right here. Perfect pass over the shoulder. Only the receiver can make a play. Steps out of bounds. I mean, that's defenseless, right? That is defenseless. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a perfect pass. I mean, it's a great route. And again, I'd mentioned it earlier, they just get Hazleton back. Last, last week was his first game of the season. Been working on a hammy. Makes a big play. Hinden Hooker. Wow, what a drive. It's Nikosi Perry's time. Lost the ball. It came loose. He passed it. 
getting through with his left hand is actually a smart play by Nikosi Perry. They're going to say second down. Taiwan Garbett gets the pressure, and before he's able to go to the ground, he switches hands, puts it in his left, and he's outside the tackle wow. box. So that is not intentional grounding. Heads up, smart play right there by Nikosi Perry, because not only if he doesn't do that, do you lose the yardage, but the clock also runs because it's a sack. And right now, you're at 55 seconds and just one timeout. Cerebral quarterback Nikosi Perry, look at the ebb and flow of this football game. The story of two entirely contrasting halves. Please reset the game clock to 57 seconds. And, you know, one thing I'd like to point out Thank from you. that last rush, it's only a three-man rush. They're dropping eight right now for Virginia Tech. If Virginia Tech's only going to rush three, they got five in to block. They got to give Nikosi Perry more time. Second and ten for Miami. Perry. Sends his man downfield. Osborne incomplete. That ball underthrown and broken up nicely by Connor. Boy, Connor has been ubiquitous all over the field this afternoon for Bud Foster's defense. And it's third down and ten. Good coverage down the field. Nikosi Perry rolls to his right, try to buy his receiver some time. Was working KJ Osborne to try to get open. And as you mentioned, pass well underthrown. K.J. Osborne unable to get back and attempt to make a play on the football. Third and ten. Miami with just one timeout remaining. Perry going to sling it. Complete over the middle out to the 45-yard line to T. Wiggins. Get on it. Wiggins took a big hit there on the gain of 20. Get on it. You want to spike it? Kill it. And Wiggins is shaken up. I mean, he took a hit. They rocked his world a little bit after he made the catch. Take one more look at it in real speed, real time. Ooh. Wiggins, a very lithe and slight 6'3, 200 pounds, and I'm not sure that bodies are meant to bend like that, Dusty, under that type of force. Ashby delivered the hit from his linebacker spot. There's a look at Ashby on the sidelines. Forty seconds to go. Good to see Wiggins get up. And come off the field under his own power. That's one less tall target on the field for Perry here. And the dying moments of this football game. Both these teams looking for their first conference win. Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator. Matched up against Bud Foster, the D.C. for the Hokies. What a chess bash it's, it's been. Perry has plenty of time as they drop eight. For Jordan, and it's incomplete. And the clock stops with 29 seconds to go. Nikosi Perry put out in front for Brevin Jordan to try to make an acrobatic diving catch. Just a little bit too far. The very athletic tight end. It'll be second down and 10, 29 seconds to go. And uh, Jordan getting up slowly there on the far sidelines. I wonder the way he hit, did he maybe knock the, the wind out of himself? And he's a guy that uh, speaks a lot to former Hurricane tight ends. He's telling me earlier this week, he spoke with Jeremy Shockey. He told him his key to success at Miami was. Uh, Knowing his playbook and being attuned with his quarterback is something that Brevin Jordan has worked on a lot since arriving on campus the last couple of years. And some great tight ends come through the U. Yeah. Yes. Told me he spoke with David and Joku as well. Greg Olson. Greg Olson. My old yeah. teammate. Good friend. These former Miami players, very prideful yes. and their university, their alma mater. Second down and ten. DC, Bud Foster on the right, Danny Enos on the left. There he comes underneath, completes it to Pope. Pope is going to be short of the first down by about three yards. So it'll be third and three. 21 seconds to go, and uh, Miami is going to burn its final timeout with 21 seconds to play. 
Good leverage there by Virginia Tech, ensuring that they keep the Miami receiver in bounds as he's trying to come to the near sidelines. Gonna burn that final timeout. We've already seen one Hail Mary. <laughs> yeah. You can see Coach Fuente telling his team, let's finish. Hooker, the quarterback. It's like, no, it's not going to happen. We got this. And Bud Foster, his defensive coordinator, trying to keep it on lock right now. And Manny Diaz, a little bit disconcerted and despondent. On the other sideline for the Hurricanes, here in the game's dying moments, an introspective Manny Diaz in a pretty turbulent, very different first season as head coach for the University of Miami. And, uh, Justin Fuente, meanwhile, in his fourth season, this could be a, a big and pivotal win for his program. It's a huge game for both of these programs. Third and three. Perry to the outside, complete. And Wiggins back in the ball game after taking that big hit. Picks up the first down with 17 seconds to go. Miami with no timeouts remaining. Crucial play, timing route, on time and on target, and out of bounds. They pick up the first down and only burn four seconds. Now Very well executed out of a timeout. Got maybe two, maybe three remaining plays. On which one of them do you take it into the end zone? Not yet. You want anything breaking out to the sidelines or got to be past the sticks to stop the clock. From the 36, Perry sets and throws it out of bounds. So that stops the clock with 11 seconds to go. Looking at probably two plays remaining. Two plays. I think that you try to look for something around the sidelines, right around the first down marker. Give yourself a little bit better opportunity, get closer to the end zone, then you got to take your shot. Again, sacks can't take one. Getting tackled short of the first down, inbounds can't happen, or the game is over. Osborne split wide to the bottom of your screen. And Virginia Tech is going to call timeout. Use one of their remaining two timeouts right here with 11 seconds to go. It has been an afternoon that has been extremely unconventional. Started with the lunch pail and the mentality that comes along with it, something that has been ingrained, something that has been indigenous to Virginia Tech under Frank Beamer and beyond. And well, the turnover chain hasn't made many appearances here, but there have been some touchdown ring earning performances. The best one so far, perhaps, from DJ Dallas. And then that moment, the missed extra point and the counter on that last drive by the Hokies, which brings us to this point of the evening. Dusty, we're running about 20 after uh, seven. It's about a four hour game now, but a great one. How do you see this thing evolving in these last couple of plays? Well, let's go right to the action. I mean, it, I... they got two chances. Perry, flag thrown. Perry zings it, completed the 20 yard line, but hold on. Flag down. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 90. Wow. After distance to the goal, first down. Catch was by Osborne. Well, let's see where they place the ball. They're going to keep it at the 20 after the catch. Five seconds to go. And Virginia Tech is going to call its last time out. So this is the play, right, Dusty? This is the play. I asked you a question a moment ago. Didn't get a chance <laughs> to answer. This is the play now for the Miami Hurricanes. Got to take it to the end zone, obviously. Let's go back to the studio real quick. Matt? Yeah, quickly, guys, while you're locked into this, over on ESPN2, DeAndre Swift for Georgia punches it in from three yards out. That kicked over on E2. We'll move it over to ESPN here at the conclusion of Miami-Virginia Tech. Okay, Jeff Thomas has been one of the big receivers so far today. Got Jordan, got a bunch of guys. K.J. Osborne, the vet, who's your pick? I think K.J. Osborne, okay. Brevin Jordan. Those are the two guys that I'm going to try to target. I'm going to try to set something out and get them open. At the same time, if they blow a coverage, somebody else uh, wins. Nikosi Perry's got to find whoever the open man is. But I think coming out of this, K.J. Osborne's been a, been, a, been a big red zone target for this team. 
all season. And I think Brevin Jordan's the most talented player they have on their offense. So that's who I'm going to try to isolate and target coming out of this timeout. You wonder if Dan Enos has a little trickery perhaps in his bag, something that he brought from Tuscaloosa as quarterback's coach under Nick Saban. This game any fun, man? This has been as good as it gets from Gosh. the 10-yard line after the penalty. This is it. Perry out of the shotgun. Tipped up. Incomplete. Ball game Hokies. The clock shows zero. But hold on. Manny Diaz I, says there's a second remaining. I think there was. They went for Brevin Jordan on a post. It looked like Reggie Floyd was able to tip the ball. I think one second That's should the end be. Of the game. Oh, no. Okay. They called game wow. here in Miami Gardens. It's over. Hooker, the lunch pail, lead Miami Gardens with a win, 42 to 35. For Olivia Decker, Dusty Dvorak, and our entire crew, I'm Mark Jones. The Hokies get their first conference win.